I'm Dave from Boinaband.com, and today we're going to take a look at Battery 3, the drum sampler of choice for Complete 7 users. This is the other Complete 7 device I've really taken to, since it can be a nice alternative to rewiring Reason to use Kong if you only need some quick one-shots, though it can be a lot more in-depth than that. Let's take a look. Features and versatility. It's a nice sampler, mainly for its versatility. One quick example is that you can change the number of rows and columns really quickly and easily here to increase or decrease the simplicity or availability of samples for different kits, which is a cool feature that I've not seen on another sampler. Another cool feature is this stretch down the bottom. So for instance, if I wanted this bass drum to have a bit more length, I'll just open up stretch and just bring down that speed. You can smooth it out or make it glitchy. If you take it right down there. If you want something a bit more IDM. And as we go more in depth, you'll begin to realize that it's got a lot of useful features on offer. I'll quickly run through what's in these tabs to give you a rough idea. Now the setup tab allows for some complex grouping options, which make for more natural sounding kits, such as alternate dynamics with articulation here. I'll show you that now. So if I select this bongo, for instance, and we turn on the articulation. We've got a three stroke rough going on, or a flam, which is a double hit. We could change the dynamics and the speed of them. Now let's try a speed roll. Kind of explains what it is up here as well, musically. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we've got mapping, which is good for multi sampling, which is great for the more realistic kits. So you can get really light hits on the low velocity and really hard hitting sounding ones on the high velocities. If we go to wave and say we go back to this bass drum, I'll turn off the uh, stretching. This is pretty good for quick chops to tidy up samples and this snap to zero here works really well as well. So for instance, if we wanted to uh, Chop out some of this middle part here, just cut. Now, I've only really used it for one shot, so I'm not sure about loop, but modulation allows for cool performance-based changes, such as making high velocity change the effects. So here, for instance, if we route the modulation router to bits and go into effects and turn on the lo-fi, then the bits down. As you can hear, I'm hitting that quite low, and then higher. It's more crisp, so lower ones are more kind of chip tuny and glitchy, and harder ones are less so. The rest of the effects themselves are the main ones you'd kind of expect from drum sounds. You've got the lo-fi and the saturator in particular, which I found pretty cool for dirtying up samples, so if we turn that on and makes it hit that bit harder. And there are presets for the effects as well as the whole kits, which is really cool for quick inspiration since they vastly alter the sound. So I'll show you a couple of them as well. So if we, let's choose a different kit, bit of variation. Nice and cheesy, if we load up. I'll show you a few more of those samples later, this isn't a particularly brilliant example, but let's move on to, for now, usability. The pads are quite clear as to what they do, and once you get your head around the tabs, it's quite simple. Some of the kits don't follow the same keyboard mapping though, which can get a little confusing when trying to play in from a keyboard or an MPC device. It's pretty easy to change the mapping once you figure it out though. For instance, if I wanted this note that I'm playing to trigger this snare instead, we'll just go to the cell, hit learn, then hit to play the lowest note you want to trigger the sound, followed by the highest, which I'm just going to use the same because I want it assigned to the same note. And there we go. It now plays that one as well. And we can just change that one later if we wanted to. Now this does seem a bit weird to me, having to do the lowest and highest rather than just defaulting to a single note, but it's a minor thing. So now you got a nice layered snare really quickly. Now the basic sample manipulation is implemented well, particularly if we look down here, this volume envelope which, if 
if we turn on, we can see it's got a nice visual representation of the envelope on the waveform, which is really useful for measuring how the attack, decay, sustain, and release will affect the sound. So if we turn it on on the kick instead of the snare that we were just on and turn up the attack, you can see that it takes until about then for it to properly kick in. So if we bring that back and check out the pitch envelope, which is similarly useful, it's pretty obvious as to what it does because of that overlay on the sample. So if we take the amount down a little bit, actually bringing it up will allow us to see it better. So if we drag this decay, you can see it's got more of that low pitched, whereas if we bring the decay right up, it stays higher pitched for longer and you don't get so much of that bassiness. I think it's great when features like this are clearly explained visually without having to resort to a manual or one of those YouTube tutorials from overly egotistical British guys who think they're funnier than they actually are. Quality. There are some nice samples in battery, though it's kind of hard to find them. Even though they're organised, if we have a look in here, we've got electronic kits, synthetic kits, acoustic kits, production kits, whatever they are but the samples don't always relate to what you'd expect. These drum and bass ones, for example, seem really weak for drum and bass. There's some brilliant incidental samples like the siren brush, nice metal sounds you could probably mess around with. But for main one shots, I generally stick with grabbing sample packs and using these to add a bit more intricacy to the beats. That said, there are some nice big splashy hits, just not many of them are really tight and punchy ones that are so hard to come by and so useful in productions. The master also has some nice effects to tidy up and polish off the kit, which lifts the overall quality, which is a nice touch to put in the sampler itself without resorting to external effects. So we can easily just chuck on a compressor here. Et voila! Now I'll show you a few of the kits before we move on. So overall, I'd say it's a good sampler, though you'll probably need to get some bigger samples for a lot of dance music, since it's quite difficult to sift through the strong and the weak ones in the banks. It's kind of disappointing that they don't have a browser similar to Massive, where you could choose samples based on their oral qualities, maybe in battery four. But still, I use it a lot. It's good for working with the samples you've got, allows you to get going quickly, and then when you're ready to refine your percussive and incidental sounds, it's got the depth to allow you to do so. Pretty much what you need from a sampler. If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boy in a Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave P. Brown. And if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boy in a Band forum at boyinaband.com forum and sign up so you can share your songs to get new fans and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day!